Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. This tutorial is all about having a public Valheim server. And a public Valheim server is a totally different beast. It's almost a different game than what you're used to with Valheim. You need to get their attention and show them this isn't another Valheim server. It's obviously different as soon as the player enters the server. What does the person see when they join your server, all right? And a great way to facilitate exploration of the server is a vantage point. You want one of these platforms, so then people are like, oh, okay, what's that? And then they wanna go find it. But in order to go find it, they have to get there. And on the way there, a bunch of stuff will happen that will distract them and inspire them. Now, let's get into the unfortunate next reality of public servers, dealing with the griefers and banning people. I I'm gonna show you what griefers do. All right, look at this nice, pretty building, downloaded from Valhemians, by the way. Well, I'm a griefer, so I'm up at like 1.30, 2 a.m., no one else is on the server, and I'm about to destroy everything that I think other people care about. And this, oh, you see, they just run into what you care about most, and then boom, form, and then it's all gone. And then they do this. Boom, nothing. Oftentimes, they'll hack so that they can use dev commands even if your server's protected. Valheim has like no protection for this kind of stuff. And they'll hack to fly like this. So you need to be able to protect things in your server against this item, okay? And here we are, we're back in the center of the heart of the world, everything we care about with the item that destroys everything, and hiya! Boom. Not everything was destroyed. What's up with this? Let's do it again. Boom! <laughs> we get plenty of lag, but you can see that things don't all get destroyed. And that's because you can make things invincible. So it's very important that in your public server, in the center of the world, where the hotbed of activity is going to be, you make the, th the world invincible, basically. Because that way, people can't just destroy everything with this item. They have to hack this command, force delete, and then like a hundred. See, There's, you can't do anything about it. So this is what they'll do. So I log into the server sometimes and it literally is like this. There's just this and a bunch of dead bodies from people like spawning. Sometimes they- And realistically, to have a public server, it has to be fundamentally different than what you're used to with Valheim because of what I just showed you. About half to a quarter of the people who join the public server are malicious. So they will actively seek things to destroy, they will harm other players if they can, spawn monsters, bring monsters to them. You have to actively protect the fewer players who are genuinely trying to have fun. The best way to think about it is like an instance in a game, like an MMO, like in World of Warcraft or something, right? This is a place that you go to have a combat experience, to try and kill the challenges and monsters in front of you and surpass them and beat the boss, right? Imagine that, but made in a Valheim server. And if you keep going, this is an area that you can fight already aggressive Dverger. Really, you can have so much fun playing this way. It's something you haven't experienced before in Valheim. The way the public server needs to work is that you have a server that you build, and basically when you play Valheim, you're building this stuff. You're building these series of challenges for people to play. And when you're building this, you use dev commands and mods like plan build. But then once you've built something, you save it, right? So you just save, you save your world. But when people play on your dedicated server, they're not playing on the master version. They're playing on a copy. A public server has a state that it resets into every one to seven days, maybe every 30 days. It really depends on how people are playing the server and how many griefers and hackers visit. So you are constantly maintaining your own single player version of the world. And that's how you edit and change everything. So anytime that your world gets wrecked, 
all that you have to do is restore the world to the most recent version of the world that you've been building. And this creates a gameplay loop. Public servers, when they're fun and done this way, much different than a regular Valheim server. You don't have gear progression at all. Instead, you have challenges and you're given what you need to just sort of try your skills out, right? Well, now that we have uh, totally destroyed this part of the base, how do we restore our backup? In public servers, you don't really have a backup. You have the base state that you want the world to start in, and then people play on it, and then you reset it back to that base state. So even if people don't abuse your server, you're still going to reset it occasionally back to that base state. So now all I have to do is load this up, and here we are. Look at that. The whole starting area is intact and I died. <laughs> I fell for I forgot the trap was there. <laughs> well, the backup worked. Because I reset the server to the base state, it's not just the building that's back, it's also all of the monsters. And this is actually an invisible trap where there's a goblin shaman down there shooting up here. So whenever he hears stuff, he tries to shoot this lamp, and then if you're right there, you'll just die. And this is all well and good, right? I mean, obviously, I can make a copy on my own computer like I just showed you and reset things that way. But what about the actual server? Let's see how we do it on the server. Now that we've exited out of Valheim, we'll make a new copy of the server. So I would just copy this new quest file, right? And then I'll go to desktop and then paste it here. Here's our server, I've already connected to it, right? And if we open it up, then we can see that we can navigate to this world's local folder. And this will have some recent backups. It makes like, Valheim makes like one backup in the morning and one at night, but I don't rely on those at all. All I have to do is replace these files with my files, okay? But if I do that right now, it won't work. The server is still running. So if I replace these files now, they'll just get re-replaced as soon as the server shuts down. So I need to go to my server host, which is Zap, right? And then I need to go to my server and turn it off. Because then you can go into FileZilla and wait a little bit, maybe like a minute, and replace them with your most recent one by just dragging this over here and then clicking overwrite. And now that you've made the changes to the files, you can click start and this will have reset the server back to your most recent default Valheim. state. Because Valheim doesn't really allow you to have a public server, unfortunately. You have to have a password. So you can essentially make a public server. This server is called a great place to die. PW is password. And the server password is password. So anybody who reads the name of the server can join it. You'll okay. also need to be aware of how public servers and private servers, community servers in general, are presented to the player. So they need to go to this join game area and then click on community. And here you can see that there's all of these servers your server will show up at the top of the list, basically, it's more likely to, when it's, it's alphabetical. So it's good to start your server name with something like A something. Notice that the more <laughs> players are on your server, the more people are attracted to be on your server. And what's funny is you can actually see that this is my server. <laughs> see what I mean? Uh, you can make it show up at the top if you just make it with A. And it seems to prioritize servers that just restarted recently. So you cannot show up here. It'll kind of cycle you in and out based on what's going on. And if you're active, you'll show up here. Now, I got to make your life easier with these log files and dealing with griefers. Okay, I'm going to teach you how you can look at a log file and know who's griefing or stealing without ever looking at the game. All right. Here we have 17,000 lines. This is the server's log for the past, I don't know, three or four days, okay? This is mostly irrelevant stuff. I'm going to focus on three things that show up in the server 
First, we need to find every occurrence of Z-Doid. So we select Z-Doid, control F, find all. And then we need to press home. That will bring the cursor of every line to the beginning. Now we hold shift and then we press end. That's going to take every one of those cursors highlighting all along the way to the end of that specific line. Now we copy and we make a new file and paste what we copied. Now we're going to also do this for the RPC disconnect. We're going to paste this at the bottom here. Now we need the Steam IDs. So we're gonna look for platform ID. Now we have this list, which instead of 17,000 lines of mostly irrelevant stuff, is only 1,120 lines of very relevant stuff. But we have a bit of a problem here. It's out of order. Select everything, go to edit, and then sort lines. So it'll get sorted back into the events that everything occurred in. And this is the holy grail. This is how you identify what people are doing on your server. Regular players have a pattern and hackers have a pattern and thieves and griefers have a pattern, okay? Let's get a little bit familiar with this, okay? You see these Zedoid events? Every time this happens, the easiest thing for you to think about is it means that the person is looking at the troll loading screen. You know how in Valheim, when you die or when you enter the game, you see that loading screen? That's the easiest way to understand this. If you know exactly what these numbers mean, that would be awesome. Comment below, please educate me. But for now, I'm gonna tell you what I know with certainty. Zedoid, zero, zero, means the person died. Zedoid, with anything else, means the person just logged in. Because this person is an honest, regular player. I can tell because there's a Zedoid event, they log in, and then every time they die, it's matched with this one, right? That's what happens normally. I don't know how to explain it, but when you die in Valheim, both of these lines show up, right? And you can see that they're quite, it, it was actually these two, sorry, I highlighted the wrong ones. You can see that they happen at the exact same time. And when it's in this pattern of a number and then zero, zero, a number and a zero, zero, that's an organic player. However, here we have another player, Mike Doido. But notice here that every time the person joins, here we go, they log in 48 minutes, and then they there is a disconnection. Two minutes later, they log in again. And then just a minute or two later, they disconnect. And then they do it again. What's happening is this person is taking things from the server and removing them. They're logging out and putting them in their own places, logging back into the server, and then taking stuff. And I can know that because I've studied them and I've caught them, basically. I've watched them do it. I don't ban them. I just observe them until I know how to predict their behavior. And then I ban them. I will say that just because somebody that this happens a couple times, like maybe once or twice, that's okay. That's not really a problem. But what you'll find is that you'll get recurring people who just liquidate your whole server. And this is one of those guys. He's been doing that for the past two or three days. So I know that he's doing that because this has occurred so often, I know it's not an accident. He's not just accidentally disconnecting and then reconnecting. And there's a difference between when people play on your server, they, they like leave clutter. They don't just liquidate everything. But when someone steals from your server, they take absolutely everything. So it's very obvious when someone is doing that because you can just check and see that somebody stole everything and look in the logs and see who did it. And it may seem weird to you, but this is all sketchy behavior. I can tell just by looking at it, seeing how often uh, a Z-Doid is followed within a minute or two by a disconnect, and especially when these events are happening over and over and over again. That means people are stealing.
And then just for fair sake, because I know that occasionally I'll ban innocent people by mistake, I delete this list every like month or so. Just because then I know that the, the guilty people are gonna re-mess with my server and then I'll catch them again. Or they'll learn their lesson and know that if they steal all the crap, they'll get banned. If you're interested in setting up your own dedicated server, then, or paying to have your own dedicated server, then check out my tutorial all about that.